So I hear you keep saying that um, zone, region, is it supposed to be about zone or supposed to be about comp um, competence? It's supposed to be all, it's supposed to be about competent and zones. And if you are talking about competency, none of them is comp is more capable and have the capacity to deliver. Even, even someone who, has, who, like you said, has just one step to get into that position? Even him, of course. What is his track record in the, in the, in the ninth and in the eighth assembly? We know the track record of her right or a but he's just as silent as Eva. We in Nigerians, we just need a politicians that are very lousy, that are making noise. Tajin Abbas in the Eighth Assembly, he has, he is the third with the highest bill in the Eighth Assembly. In the Ninth Assembly, Tajin Abbas is the second. Out of the 36 states that we have in this country, Tajin Abbas, the nation benefited from a bill he passed, benefited from his uh, bill of med med uh, Federal Medical Center. 23 states out of the 36, including the FCT. Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is The Conversation. We're reaching you from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. Now let's move to our next leg of the conversation we have on the show this morning. Honorable Suraj Sanusi Abubakar, he is former aspirant, APC Zonal Organizing um, Secretary, Northwest. It is great to have you on the show today, sir. It's my pleasure and thanks to you for having me. Yeah. Great. All right, now let's first start, before we talk about the... Um, very colorful tent assembly. Let's start by talking about um, the 2023 general elections and its outcomes. And we know that um, a number of people still feel aggrieved. You have people who are still at the election tribunal trying to reclaim their mandate. So with all that happened, with all that inspired from the um, 25th of February down to the governorship and state assembly elections and even though we're looking forward to the national assembly elections let's get your thought with all that happened even though we know that you're with the APC so a lot of people will say okay we don't expect you to say it's anything short of free fair credible but would you say as a Nigerian would you say that we had one of the freest the fairest the most transparent and credible election in 2023 uh, thank you very much. With this kind of question, I will not answer you as an APC member. I will answer you as an Nigerian. Great. I'm a, forget about I am a partisan and a member of the APC. Uh, the 2023 general election is credible, fair, and peaceful to me. Because um, it's obvious. We all know what happens in the election. I am from Kaduna State and the Northwest Zone. In my zones. In my zone, what happened there, the election was free, fair, peaceful, and credible. And okay. likewise, we are in 21st century. Whatever is happening in the world, you will see it via the media. The election is free and fair. I'm sorry to see the people that are saying that this election um, is, is not free, fair, or credible are the Labour Party people. But you have a PDP also in court. Of, the, of course, the PDP... The PDP is also in court, but they are the ones that are agitating more. They are making noise, trying to say that this election is not credible, thinking that uh, maybe to contest to be the just president is, is the work of some one zone, or some few zones to make it to, to make the just president. It's never possible, and it will never happen in Nigeria. Mm. I can boldly tell you, it's not that I hate uh, the Labour Party people. I can boldly t t tell you that. The Labour Party people, they just campaign, they just think that from the northeast, from the southeast, maybe some part of the south south, some part of the north central, they can win the Nigerian election. Forgetting that the people that are the decision makers, we are the northwest. But you have also people from the northwest that were rooting and gunning for them also. That, of course. But which state did they win from the northwest? Can you tell me please? They, they cannot even need a local, they can win a local government in some part of uh, maybe Kaduna State, my former state. But they cannot win even a zone. They can never win a senator. Are you talking of APC now or PD, uh, PDP rather Labour or party. Labour Party? I'm talking about the Labour Party. PDP is, is a, Labour Party is not a party to me to some extent. They are not ready for, for the whole thing of uh, politics. So with all of the campaigns for the presidential seats. So with all of the campaigns that happened, you still tell them that they are not ready. They are not ready. They need already. to go and align well. 
Why did you say so? Because they don't truly understand the real politicking in Nigeria, especially for the presidential position. Tell us, what is the real politicking in Nigeria that we don't know or they don't know? Okay, the real politicking in Nigeria is to believe in Nigeria, one. To believe that Nigeria is a one nation. To be a fan Nigeria. To believe that you suppose you have to carry everyone from all the zones along. Regardless of the Muslim, regardless Muslim tickets. Regardless of the ethnicity group or regardless of what are you saying. Regardless of um, religion. And then at some point um, they were accusing your party of going for the Muslim, Muslim ticket. Regardless of that. Regardless of that. Regardless of that. If you are talking about Muslim, Muslim ticket. See, the Muslim, Muslim ticket is just happened based on circumstance and condition. This is the solution for our party and we want our party to win. It's, yeah. But I believe the Muslim, Muslim ticket will not affect who will not cheat the Christians in this country. But time will reveal. Quote me anywhere. We will not cheat them. We will not, they will not feel marginalized. Mm. God willing. Because it, is, it has already started. Recently, I think it's not up to a week, His Excellency appointed the SDF of the Federation and he's a Christian from the North Central. Okay, so now what you're telling us is um, with regards to the um, religion, it was just about politicking or trying to win an election. Is that what you're saying? Of course. Of course, yes. It's obvious. Tunibu is a super minority from the Southwest. From the Northwest, we can, if we carry, if the party choose a Christian from the Northwest or from the North, it's, it's, it's a super minority. We cannot go for two minorities. Automatically, we will lose the election. I don't know if you get it. It's not by uh, we, the party, want to Islamize the country or, or, or something like that. Mm. It's not about that. All right. Now, let's talk about um, the... Um, 10th assembly first of all let's talk about the 9th assembly we saw that recently they have wind up or that yeah. drawn the curtain so we're looking forward to a very colorful 10th assembly let's what talk about they? the 10th um, assembly first and then the 10th assembly leadership and the tussle around getting the right man for that position what would you tell us it's very simple and clear what i would tell you is the bona fide members of the party, all of the contestants, should be loyal to the party and the decision of the party. It's as simple as that. Which I believe what the party is doing is not based on, they don't want to. It is very clear in the Nigerian Constitution section 14 that no religion or tribe or section should feel marginalized. What the party is trying to do is based on equity to carry everyone along nigeria is not a country of just the muslim or the christians or the people from the south or not and even if there are people that will say that we, that would be feel marginalized this time around is the northwest despite the contribution the northwest is giving is the northwest how should you feel marginalized because of our contribution of our population the vote we are, we, are, we, are, we are giving to the country. We are the, I told you, I, can, I, I am proud. We can say we are, we are the decision makers because of our numerous number. With our contribution, it's either we should be, we be the president or the vice president. But what we are talking today, we don't have the president, the vice president. Not even the speaker, not even the senate president talk less of the speaker. Some are even overlapping that they want to get the speaker. For what? Are you, are you actually shooting shots at someone on you? Do you want, like to call names? I am calling names. So who are you uh, referring to directly here? I am referring directly to Right Honorable Ahmed Idris Wasi and Right, Honor, right Honorable Mutar Bitara. Do they not have um, also... Listen. Sorry, are they not please. supposed to also contest in this election? Nobody can deny them their constitutional rights. Okay. But uh, mind you, even when the Northwest governors stood firm before the 2023 general election that the power must be shifted to the south. God bless my governor, the former governor of Kaduna, he is the, the brain box of that. And uh, without doubt, it is commendable. And we will never forget him, not just we, the Nigeria will never forget him, which is not constitutional. It is, it is based on equi equitable grounds. 
But the power today is shifted to the south. Just to make things right, just to do the right thing, and just to make sure that everyone is carried along. Why would you go and contest for the speakership position? Nobody can deny them, as I told you earlier. Mm -hmm. But at least, based on equity, they're supposed to say, they should, if I would advise, they should step down for Tajin Abbas and for the interests of the Northwest to feel the impacts of their collective contribution. Of course. Okay, I'm going to take um, a particular um, a message or a particular quote from um, Honorable uh, Idris Wasi. He said, and quote, um, according to him, he said that when you say you have a consensus candidate, the language for consensus is that there have been mass consultations. People go to the table for the discussion. There is an agreement. But in this case, we just saw and we were hearing rumors, speculations that some people have been made consensus candidate. And he further stated that I do not know whether this is the meaning of consensus. This is a very sacred place and we are honorable. We must be honorable in our action and defense of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So help us and by extension, help Honorable Idris Wasi understand what is consensus. And with this... Um, with what was why uh, the election or the consensus that brought forth um Tajuddin Abbas is that really consensus um what happened actually um Wasi is not even supposed to to make this statement reason why is his zone the north central produced the national chairman of the APC likewise produced the SGF of the federation why will Wasi complain because of his interest, because he's feeling he's the deputy speaker, maybe he's just one step ahead to be the speaker. No, this is not how it's supposed to be. Let me tell you, Tajuddin Abbas did not even think he would become the, 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 the tenth speaker of this time around. He's just the, the beneficiary based on equity, based on the consensus that, based on the party tentative zoning arrangement right from the national convention. The position of the speaker was initially zoned to the northwest, right from the convention of the EPC. And was he is from Joss, from his he's from the North Central. Consensus that he is saying that nobody is supposed to go he's, uh, there, there, there should be a wider consultation. I believe even if he he, he was not consulted before, now he's consulted. So I hear you keep saying that um, zone region is it supposed to be about zone or supposed to be about comp um, competence it's supposed to be all it's supposed to be about competent and zones and if you are talking about competency none of them is comp is more capable and have the capacity to deliver well even, even someone who has who like you said has just one step to get into that position. even him of course what is his track record in the in the in the ninth and in the eighth assembly we know the track record of her right or about Tajin Abbas is just as silent as Eva. We in Nigerians, we just need uh, politicians that are very lousy, that are making noise. Tajin Abbas in the 8th Assembly, he has, he is the third with, with the highest bill in the 8th Assembly. In the 9th Assembly, Tajin Abbas is the second. Out of the 36 states that we have in this country, Tajin Abbas, the nation benefited from a bill he passed, benefited from his, his uh, bill of med 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 Federal Medical Center. 23 states out of the 36, including the FCT. What are we saying? There are a lot of people that I believe time will not even allow me to, 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 to tell. Tell us three. Because I have some people who say that, why, why do you have people gone in for um, Honorable Abbas Tajijin? So tell us what exactly is the reason why you are actually rooting for him instead of um, Honorable Idris Wase, instead of Better, instead of um, uh, Honorable Doga, Dagoa? I should tell you the reason, tell generally. Us as competency matters yes competency is, not not z zones yeah i i understand the question that way i make it clear for you okay i told you one bill the federal medical center secondly there is a bill he amended on uh, national university commission thirdly there is a bill talking about sponsored about the national berry of um what is it for youth for youth funds, it's his bill. Forget about competency, uh, Madam Annabelle. Time will reveal. 
when Tadudin becomes the, the, the 10th speaker of the National Assembly, he will exactly recall this interview that we're having. He's very capable, capacitated. Not, it's not that, it is not exaggeration, oh, because I am from Kaduna City, where I am from, I am from his zone. And this is a matter of fact. And believe me, time will reveal who Tadudin is. All right, so is, as, aside um, the House of Assembly uh, um, representative, let's talk about the Senate. The Senate. The, the Senate president. And of then course. we know that your um, party also zoned it to mm. the South South, where you south, have south, um, Godswill Akpabio. Yeah. And then you also have um, in the Southeast, where you have um, Benjamin Carlo. And then a lot of people come out to say that why did he have to go that route? Because they would remind you of all that happened um, during. Um, that um, Benjamin Kalu drama. Is, Benjamin Kalu is, is from which zone? I'm going. To, let me finish, please. Okay. You, now, uh, the, Nigerians will actually remind you all that happened during the drama with regards to the panel that probed um, um, Senator Godswill Akwabio, the Honourable of your mic. So, why exactly is your party going that route again? Why not those people calling for um, Emilio Kong, probably from the south southeast also? From the southeast, that's, calling um, for a Milukon. Yes, that's um, Oju Uzokalu. Oju Uzokalu. Oju is a good candidate and he's a pan-Nigerian. But politics is interest. It's obvious. Maybe His Excellency, mm -hmm. the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Sir Jubal Ambatimu, prepare, prepare a God's party than Oju Uzokalu. As I told you, I'm a loyal member to the party and I will continue to be a loyal member of the party. I will pray support for Babu, Tajin Abbas, and all the interests of the party to succeed. Are you supporting them just because um, that's where they um, zoned it to? I believe our president will not do the bad thing. We are human beings. We are all fallible. We are capable of making mistakes, I believe. But I believe with his track record, I believe he will take Nigeria to where God willing, nobody expects. When you're speaking of track record, are you also speaking in, with regards to the NDDC fund? I'm talking about the Tinubu. I'm talking about the Tinubu. Okay, so we're not talking about President Tinubu now. We're talking about... We're, terms, we're, supposed we're talking to talk about, about uh, God's will of He is the one that said his prepared candidate is at Pavio. So, you're, so what why, why, will, why will I go against it? Regardless of who, uh, what the, um, whatever that the candidate has behind him, what did he has behind him? Tell me, please. We're talking about the NDDC fund right now. The NDDC funds? Yes, that was probed. And then the, all that sham that happened, at, at the, the drama that happened at that time, where you have um, Honorable off your mic. We're still okay. asking questions in that regard. Okay, okay, okay. If I get to where you're talking about uh, what he did in his track record, the ACPA view. When he was minister of the yes, NDDC. Yes, when he was minister. Yes. You know, you know one thing, in politics, generally, whether we like it or not, here and there, especially in terms of leadership, you might definitely have some mixes that you, 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 you will make. And there are things that that is not exactly what is happening. It is just a politician. Maybe they just want to backbite him. They just want to drag him back. Are you be. saying that, that was just politician? Possibly. Interesting. Maybe. All right, so let's 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 move on. Let's talk about um, youth in politics. I hear you always talk about youth in politics. Yeah. I've seen where you wrote statements with rega in that regard. What is the plan to inculcate or to um, bring in the youth in the political space? And how ready are the youth even to come into the political space? The youth are very ready. I am a youth and I am ready. Even if I can become the governor of my state, I can hold it today. And I believe there are a lot of you that are like minds that can participate actively and take the nation to the next level. That's why I am here today as a former aspirant of the EPC Zulu Government Secretary. I am just 28 years old. This month, on June, uh, June 7th, I click my 28 years old. I am very young. So the only advice I will advise the youth is to participate actively. To exercise patience and um, to make sure they have a good intention particularly for the nation to progress not for their selfish interests hmm. so how much um 
um, patients do the youth need to have at this point? Because as much as possible, if unlimited patients, unlimited patients. Now, why I asked that question is when you keep hearing that the youth are the future leaders of tomorrow, but then the same youth are the ones that are gone in for the older generations to get up in power. So how much patience is patience for you? For me, is um, I can say the patient, it, it has even started paying to some extent. Because today, if you look at the political terrain of the Nigeria, uh, the participation of youth in the politics, youth inclusion in politics, it has increased. It has increased very well. Not like before, that you will see a member House of Assembly of 60 or maybe 50 years old. We have a member House of Representative 27 today. 28, 32, 36. From the local government that I am, that I came from, Kaduna North, Honorable Bella if I is 35. He's very, he's young. Not like before. And there are a lot of positions, appointments, uh, SEs, SSEs, DGs of state per status, federal per status, and what have you. A lot of them are, dri are driving today by the youths. The question you asked me, how patience, that if we have the nation at the back of our mind, if we know we have a lot to contribute to take this nation to the next level, we should come and participate actively. We should just keep participating without, we, we should not be tired. We should be participating actively always. We should exercise patience. And even these people that are called the elites, our, our fathers, our grandfathers in this politics, follow them. They should keep you true. They should guide you with their wisdom. All right. Even as we begin to read a statement where you noted that our message here as concerned and loyal youth of the APC is that Honorable Mokhtar Betara and... Vice President Legion of Wasi Produce, the National Chairman of APC and SGF, and um, quite a lengthy one. But now let's get your last word in that regard, talking to your party members, and then why we should get, um, why we sh they should be rooting for Honorable um, Tajuddin Abbas. I've said it earlier. Uh, they should. In the zone of Wasi, it's not just the Nigerian Vice President. The NSA of the Federation is also from that zone. Ribado, he was appointed. And it's a, it's a plus to his zone again. And he should consider it. I am talking particularly, I am adding this based, uh, based on the Betra zone. Um, my last message to them is, as I said earlier, nobody can deny them their constitutional rights. It is their rights. They meet all the necessary requirements and the criteria to contest they can contest but we are pleading we are not agitating okay we are pleading that they should step down to support Tajin abbas because one of the judicious position of the party secondly for the interest of the northwest to feel the impact of their collective contribution it is very important for we the northwest to know that at least we don't have the president, the vice president, the SGF, the chief of staff, and what have you. But this speaker should be given to us at it is zone initially to the zone, right from the convention. All right. Thank you so much, um, Honorable Suraj um, Sanusi Abu Bakr. It's been a wonderful time having this talk with Thanks you. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. All right, yeah. viewers, um, that's where we end this conversation. We have been chatting with Honorable Suraj um, Sanusi Abu Bakr, his former aspirant, um, APC Zona Organizing Secretary in Northwest. And it's been a wonderful time here on The Conversation. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will see you next time. Keep watching The Conversation because you never know who my next guest will be and what I will be speaking of next. My name remains Annabelle Oji. God bless you and yours. God bless Nigeria.